Hello and welcome to the fourth video in our webcast series on the topic of orthographic projection. Now in our previous videos we were looking at how we were able to get our various orthographic views by projecting the surface of an object onto a plane of reference. And our, in our last video we were looking at how to connect each of those um, views together. So in this video we're going to look at our various planes and how we represent them or how they're represented onto our sheet of paper. So we're going to begin by looking at first of all the 2D representation of our object so this is like what you'd see on your sheet and over here we have a 3D representation of the same thing. Now to start with you can visualize what we have on our sheet um, in two ways. One way is as a folded out version of um, our planes of reference. So like what we see here each of our views being folded out flat um, so we can represent it on our sheet of paper. And when we view our object in that in those terms, each of our lines here represents a hinge line. So if we take, say, our line from here to here, well that represents this hinge line where our objects are folded out. So if we just fold it up, we can see there it is there. There's our hinge line between our vertical plane and our horizontal plane as seen on this XY line here. Likewise, our YY line from here down to here represents the hinge between our vertical plane and our horizontal plane. So at its most basic, our XY and our YY lines will represent the corners of our object like so, so are they where it's been hinged from. Um, now, a more useful way to imagine the same lines is as an edge view of our various planes of reference when looking from different directions. And in order to explain that, I'm just going to separate out our various views. So you can think of each of these views a little bit like a separate screen representing the part of the object that we see looking from a particular direction. So our front elevation, if you can imagine our arrow here is like a camera, well this is the screen representing our image looking from the front, from above and from the two sides. So we're going to just imagine it as different screens. So let's look at our horizontal plane to start with. So if we take our object and look in from the front, our horizontal plane is represented by this ground line here. So here's our horizontal plane represented here. Likewise, if we look in from the side, we can see we have an edge view of our horizontal plane. And we can see from our object looking from above, we're looking straight down at the ground. So there's our horizontal plane represented by our green rectangle. So in our various views, I'm just going to color it in here in green to represent our ground. So when we bring all our views together, we can see the XY line in my side elevations and in my front elevation represents the ground or my horizontal plane. And say so looking from above, I see the horizontal plane looking straight down on top of it. So that's probably the most straightforward of um, our planes of reference to imagine. We're going to go on then and just look at our vertical plane. So this blue plane here. And we can see looking in from the front, we're looking directly in towards our vertical plane. So that's our vertical plane when seen straight um, straight ahead or straight on. So when we look from above, we can see our vertical plane is represented on this edge here. I'm just going to separate out my views again to make this a little bit easier. So here we can see our vertical plane represented by this blue line. Now if I bring my views together, we can see all of a sudden our XY line, well it represents two separate things depending on the view that you're looking at. Looking in from our front elevation, we can see the XY line represents the horizontal plane seen as an edge. And then when looking from above, the same line represents our vertical plane um, as an edge. So even though it's one line, depending on which view you're looking at, it will represent different things. So we'll just separate it out again. And we're just going to rotate our object so we see it from the side. And you can see when looking from the side, this line here represents our um, vertical plane or back wall. So that's what we have here in our view. So again, draw him in with our uh, blue line. So here is our vertical plane seen from above. Here's our the same plane seen looking in from the side. Um, and this is why our views have to connect together. So this is our distance of our object away from the vertical plane looking from above. And here's the distance of our object from the vertical plane looking in from the side. Um, so that's our vertical plane. The last plane we're going to look at then is going to be our end vertical plane. So that's this yellow plane. And when looking in from the left hand side, that's going to be seen as our yellow rectangle here in our end view. So that's our end vertical plane when looking straight in at it. Um, so if we look in from the front, 
we can see this edge here represents our end vertical plane. So I'm just going to color that in yellow. And you can see if I bring my views together, like what you have in your sheet, depending on the view, um, it's going to represent separate things. So looking from our front elevation, the YY line from here to here represents our end vertical plane. But yet, at the same time, if I look in my end view, the same line is going to represent my back wall, like what we saw in our um, just just a moment ago. So that's going to be our back wall, our vertical plane looking in from the side, and the same line represents our end vertical plane when seen from the front. And if we just go follow it on further and look from above, we can see the same edge here. So our continuation down here is going to represent our end vertical plane when seen from above. So that is an overview of each of the components and how they play out on our um, 2D version. So it can be useful just to imagine it as different separate views like so, or th which are just basically brought together. But the important thing is that each line will represent a different thing depending on what direction you're looking at. And this is something that we use quite a bit um, later on when it comes to using our orthographic to connect views together or maybe to put in plain slicing objects and that. So um, it forms the bedrock really of um, understanding what we're dealing with. So as always, I hope this video is of some help to you and um, stay tuned to the rest of the videos for more information. So thank you very much.